You know, I had a question here the other day, or a comment made about my milking parlor. And this is what they call a flat parlor or a step-up parlor. I'm going to tell a little bit about that here in a second. Tell about here first. For those that don't know, because this will lead into why them par parlors are around, this here is what they call a freestall barn. Cows have access to move around as they want. Now, a tie stall barn, if you can use a little bit of imagination, that's one thing people are lacking nowadays is an imagination and common sense with all the way people are getting indoctrinated nowadays. But in a tie stall barn, it'd be similar to this. You'd have these dividers. There's many different styles. Tie stall barns are a little bit different design and stuff. But there'd be basically a chain hanging down from this pipe. And the cows would have collars on them and you would chain the cow into the stall. That's why it's called a tie stall. And then in the alley between them, there'd be gutters on each side. And there'd be a chain that runs through it to clean the barn out. You'd scrape all this into the gutter, turn it on, the chain would convey everything out. And in front of each row of cows here, there'd be a manger where you'd feed them. And there'd be a pipe, water pipe that runs down through here. And usually between every other stall, there'd be a water cup at this divider where this cow and this cow would drink from. And then there'd be another one here, and these two cows would share a cup. And then with a tie stall barn, basically, you're taking the milkers to the cows, and you're bringing the feed to the cows. Now, right now it's winter time. In most guys are tie stall barns. The cows don't go, wouldn't go out every day. You know, in summertime, if you've got a tie stall barn, the cows are out on pasture. Now, a lot of guys, they do have lots where the cows usually do go out at least two or three times a week, if not every day, you know. Most guys don't keep cows chained up year round, but you know, in a tie stall barn, they are confined to their stalls when they're in the barn, but everything's brought to them. Now with a free stall barn like this, the cows are free to move as they want. And You got a main feed alley and the cows go up there to eat when they want. You got waters where cows can drink when they want and they just move around, free choice. But then you got to bring them to an area to milk. And that's where this comes in. Now this is, I'm gonna mainly concentrate on three types of parlors while I'm talking here. This is what they call a flat parlor or a step up. And then there's herring bones and parallel parlors is what I'm going to talk about. But there's also rotary parlors, which is basically a big carousel the cows ride around on while they're milked, and robotic milkers. And them are kind of catching on now. Each one has its own benefits and stuff. But where these parlors came into play, for the most part, is guys would have a tie stall barn. They'd be milking 40 or 50 cows then they'd want to expand. So what they'll do is they'll build a freestall barn off to the side. And then they would bring cows in, milk them in the tie stall barn like they normally would, turn them out and get another group in. Because usually somebody who's milking 50 cows would expand up to 80 to 100 cows. But you can't afford to do everything at once. You know, you start talking a 100-head freestall bar, you're talking over $100,000. And then to go out to buy cows and put in a parallel parlor or something, you know, you're talking quite a bit of money. So what guys would do, they'd do it in stages. They would build a freestall barn. They would, well, first they'd really start raising all the heifers that they could raise. And then when they get to the point where they're going to have them freshening, then they'd get to the freestall barn, then they'd have the animals to fill it. 
or start filling it. You know, and it might take them two or three years to increase numbers, so they'd continue to milk in their tie stall barn. Well, if you'd imagine, if this was a tie stall barn, these stalls would go all the way down to that end on both sides. So, and then you'd have the pipeline that runs all the way around the barn. And like I said, you take the milkers down to each stall. So eventually they get to a point, say they get up to that 100 cows. Well, now you got, and it increases your labor. Because you'd have somebody milking, at least one or two people milking. Then you'd have two or three people, well, at least one or two, maybe three people, turning cows out, getting the other groups in to really make any time. And like I say, it gets to the point you're actually, it's just not time efficient. So where this parlor comes in is, it's made, basically you go into a tie stall barn type setup. Now most of these tie stall barns are the old bank barns, you know, the hay malls up above and stuff. So what they would do is come in here and tear out a section of these stalls and then put these in. And then they start bringing the cows to the parlor to milk. You know, they, they might actually end up tearing out all these stalls and use this area as the holding area for, to come to the parlor. Or they might have an area off to the side and then use these for special needs cows or whatever. Well, you get into a setup like this milking, you know, like this is what they would call a single six. One row, six stalls. And one guy can milk pretty comfortably in the stalls like this. So you cut down on the amount of labor you need. Now, like I said, it's not just to the signaled out to the tie, uh, tie stall setup. This is new construction. This is all dead from scratch. But what these do is, you know, this would be your manger where the cows would have been eaten while they're exiting out here now. And the benefit of these are, if you were to um, milk it in a tie stall barn, you're squatting down to each cow. And as anybody know, know Spending all that time bending down and stuff, it just ruins your knees. Any any farmer's milk and tie stall barns pretty much got bad knees. Well, this here, because they step up, it's raising the cows up. Let me just hold on a minute here. Yeah, I'm gonna get my assistant here to help me. So I'm going. Now this is how these stalls work. If she'll cooperate. Of course, she's got to go everywhere I don't want her to go. Come on. The cow steps up. Keep going. Puts her head through the stall. Take that step. Now she's locked in. So that's what they do. They hit them, and it locks them in there. Now, if this was a tie stall barn, right here is eye level. I'm 5'11", 6 foot. This is eye level. No, oh, I don't need you stepping back. Come on. Now, if she was in a tall stall barn, I'm on the same platform as her. I gotta bend down and squat down the milker. Now, it's a flat parlor. I'm six, like I say, six, five eleven, six foot. This is eye level in the flat parlor. We got these cutouts here. You can stand in between the cow. Instead of squatting down, you just bend down a little bit. And you can reach the cow. Milkers would normally be hanging here, and then you put the milker on the cow. Now, the main benefit of this style parlor is it's cheap. Now I bought this one used, it was seven years old when I bought it. I paid $3,500 for the stall parts. That doesn't count the pipeline. I just bought the stalls. These dividers I had to have made. 
Now, when I bought this, I bought this back in 2005, and the dealer at the time when I talked to him, these were running about $2,000 a stall. And it comes in a pair or two. So you're looking at, and I don't see where it costs this much, but right here is $4,000. And I'm sure there are more now. And so that's the one benefit. The other benefit of this, these parlors are, because, well, we'll go back. You get like a parallel or a herringbone parlor. Now, like I say, this is all galvanized pipe. That's bent up and just regular metal. Most parlors are stainless steel because it lasts longer, easier to clean and stuff. You get into a parallel parlor and stuff, you're probably, I, I would guess, seven, eight thousand dollars a stall. I mean, it, they're a lot more expensive. And then these are cheaper to install because they ain't that, I don't think there's a, some, or a truckload of concrete in this, you know, to build up the platform. Now, if you're going into a stall barn, depending how it was set up, you know, you might not have to put quite as much of a platform in here. I've seen guys build this out over the gutter. And they would either actually step down into the gutter or they would have, have grates over this and build it up like mine is higher. And then the benefit of that is when they were done milking, they could just scrape everything into here, goes in the trench, and then the barn cleaner would run it out of the barn. Now with pit parlors, is what like a herringbone or a parallel, is it's a lot more construction. You gotta dig down deeper. If this was a parallel parlor, which parallel is cow standing side by side like this, this would be your eye level. So the cows are be up here another two foot, two and a half foot yet for a parallel parlor compared to what they are here. The benefit of that is you don't bend down or nothing. Everything's right at chest height. And, you know, it's a lot, lot easier on your strain milking the cows. Now, uh, so that's what guys would do. They'd build the free stall. I'll oh, leave her alone. And then they'd go to this point, and then maybe 10, 12, 15 years down the road, and they'd have a son or somebody want to get into business. Well, then they would expand again. Now, this time they've got equity built up, and they go to the next point. They might build another freestall barn or add on to the freestall barn. But then when you start getting up to, well, like I say, this is modular. You could, you could have 20 stalls here on each, on each side if you wanted to. Just, these ain't that efficient. That, then they would go to a pit parlor. And then usually that's all new construction. Now, back in the 60s, several guys in our area, they had the bank barns, stalls, and then back then, they went right to a pet parlor. Well, they're digging out the floor and the barns and stuff. I mean, a lot more construction. To put it into an old building, nowadays, it's just you're just better off building new construction, putting the pit in. But like I say, it's a lot more expensive, a lot more construction costs. But the benefits of them are, like a parallel parlor, where I got six stalls in this area, you could probably have nine cows in a parallel parlor. You could almost, you pretty much have another cow here, and another cow here, another one that stall. So you'd have, you could have nine cows milking in the same area as this. Well, one of the main drawbacks I see at parallel parlors, not all cows really adjust to it. Their udders, you know, every udder is a different shape, and depending how the bag sits, coming in from the back, the claws don't hang quite right as they would. You know, but I think the parallels are the most efficient parlors nowadays, most, most common around anyhow. But the pro one of the main drawbacks, get out of here and leave her alone, is it's the other benefit of this parlor. Each stall is individual. So if you've got six cows in here milking, and one cow also, you know, 
say she's got a tip pinch and milking slow or something, you could be milking her, turn out the rest of them. Yeah, hold on a minute. They won't leave this cat. Everybody's got to misbehave. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, if you got, you can turn out the other five while she's milking, since she's milking slower, and get another group of five in. Where if this is a parallel parlor, you can't turn nobody out until she goes out. And she's ready to go out because it's basically a group. Now, herringbone, well, like I say, parallel, ends up taking up a lot less floor space. A herringbone, you would have this cow standing here like this, and it'd be like a sawtooth through here. The next cow would be standing half partially beside her, and her udder would be back here, and so forth. Now, herringbone takes up a lot more area, but you're milking the cow from the side, which is pretty much the normal way to do it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with parallel milking from behind, but that's, but then you're up here at eye level too, so you're not stooping down. So that's the benefit of the herringbone. But they are the same way. You get one slow milking cow, you're holding up the whole line of cows. Now back in the, now it'd be the 90s, when I first started looking at building a barn, Serge had a herringbone parlor where the stalls were individual. And for the number of cows I milked, three stalls would have been enough, but it was something like $40,000 for the three stalls or something. So it's kind of never did that. Uh, what the hell was I going to say about this? Yeah, so that's a little bit about the, the difference between them parlors. Now, like I said, there's a lot of options you could do this. So like right now, I take the milkers into the parlor here, or into the milk house, and they wash in here. Now, most guys, the, claw, the milkers would stay out here. You can put automatic takeoffs in here. The problem, if you leave all the equipment in here and it's washing in here, well, then you gotta have water lines run in because there's uh, what they call jetter cups that go under the claws to cycle the water through to wash the pipeline and stuff. Well, first off, under the regulations, as long as I'm taking the claws into the milk house here to be washed, this doesn't have to be enclosed. You know, it's all open out here. But if I'm washing out here, then I have to have a ceiling enclosing this. This has to be enclosed. So, and then being wintertime here, you know, I've milked in this barn, it was two degrees in here. So you really can't have water lines in here. So, and like I say, it's just as easy to take them in there to milk or to wash them. Uh, and I guess pretty much all I was going to say about them. I mean, they say each partner has its own benefits. You know, now this, uh, this, this parlor, they say you can milk seven changes an hour. So a six head parlor, I should be able to milk 42 cows an hour in this. I'm assuming... I don't know how many guys, I would have to take at least two guys to milk, and I'm sure it's automatic takeoffs and stuff. I've never done much better than 25 or 30 cows an hour through here, but I mean, everything doesn't have to be rushed either. But like I say the par parallel parlors and herring bones are a lot more efficient, more th cow th thorough put, um, and all that. And then the other little tidbit I'll give you. What um, I say, I said before, this is what they call a single six. Now, like I say, I have a neighbor that has the same parlor, but he's got two rows. He's got four on each side, but he had it built out, and he's one, one of the ones that put it into an old tie stall barn, and he's had it quite a few years. 
because um, oh, he's got to be way over 20 years with it now. So I just talked to a dealer here the other day. He's actually just bought four new stalls because everything down here is getting rusted out. Last year, year before, he replaced four stalls on one side. This year, he's doing the four stalls on the other side. But he's got everything set up that he could put two more stalls on each side, so he's milking 12 cows at a time. But like I said, he's milking around 100 cows with uh, eight milkers. And I don't expect him to expand anytime soon. I, he's talked about building all new facilities and stuff, and I don't see that happening. He's talked at times too of getting out of it. But So that's... But this is what they call a single six. This is what they'd call a double four. If, if the pipeline is above the stalls, which would be in these, in parallel parlors and herring bones and all them, they can mount the pipelines up. This is what they call a high line. Now in the parallels and um, herring bones, since you're up, up this high and you got a curb here, they can put all this stuff underneath and they call that a low line now if anybody watches uh, 10th generation dairyman he's down here in Lancaster he's got what, what they would describe that parlor as a double 14 parallel swing parlor because he's only got 14 milkers he can fit 14 cows on each side what he does is he'll have the milkers on these 14 while they're getting this other side in. And then when this side's done, the milkers there's hang from the center here. They just swing them over and milk these 14 here. And while they're milking, they're getting these out and getting another group in. Now, like I said, if he was ever to expand the stuff, they could take all this stuff out, put pi uh, milkers on the other side, and milk 28 cows at a time if he got big enough. So that's just a little bit of some how they how they describe a parlor, but uh, yeah. So I'd make this video here real quick, and of course it never turns out quick. But right now, this is what I'm working on next. Due for a big inspection this week. I'm, I don't know what all other states uh, have out there, but here in Pennsylvania. We're inspected by the milk company every six months. But every two years, the state comes in and inspect. And that's what I'm doing here now, cleaning the walls down. I don't know if they're going to say much. I mean, this door's pretty stained up. I can't get that stuff off there. And I'm kind of still working in here. I worked in here yesterday. got the walls pretty well cleaned down. Clean the ceiling, scrub the bulk tank down. It's got a haze on it. Should probably scrub a little bit more. But I got to work on this stuff next. Let's get wash these buckets up and stuff. And I'm not sure if they're supposed to be in here, but as I said, I'll make a little another video about that. This is getting too long here now, but you know, get this junk out of here. I mean, I just a lot of the stuff I just threw here for now, so I sorted. it. But this is what it gets me. It's back utility room, and it's a mess. But this is going to be cleaned up. I hope they don't expect much, because like I said, I'm going to get the junk junk out of here. But biggest things are cleanliness in the milk house and the parlor area. Well cap, that's another big one. And the medicine cabinet being straight, cleaned up, orderly, properly labeled. But... This is what I'm working on here now. Like I said, I'll just tell them. Had some comments, questions about this parlor. And that's, like I say, basic how these came around and what they were used for. Just like an intermediate type of expansion for guys. Like I, said, I don't know why anybody wants to milk more than 150 cows anyhow. But, but like I said, that's was a cheap alternative in the middle there. And, um, so you didn't lay out all kinds of money into future expansions and give you a chance to build up equity and stuff. So, but I guess thanks for watching and I hope you found this somewhat informative. And I'm gonna really have to think about getting into editing. These are too damn long.
So we'll talk to you later.